Hello Android developers! In this video, I would like to cover the basic and some best practices of exception handling in Kotlin. Handling exceptions gracefully in Android application and in general, any software is not just the best practice. It's an essential component of providing a reliable and positive user experience. Because unhandled exceptions can cause applications to crash unexpectedly. This not only frustrates users, but can also lead to data loss and other issues. Regular crashes can gradually destroy user confidence and trust in an application. Handling exceptions properly helps to maintain a smooth, consistent user experience, which is crucial for retaining users. On the other hand, graceful handling of exceptions allows you to log errors. This can simplify the debugging process and make identifying and fixing underlying issues in upcoming releases easier. One thing that we as developer may not have thought about is that unhandled exceptions can expose vulnerability and sensitive information. By managing exceptions healthfully, you can better safeguard the application and its data. And at last, handling exceptions ensures that user can continue their task even if something goes wrong. This can be achieved by displaying user-friendly error messages or fallback content. Now that we are all on the same page about the importance of exception handling, let's talk about some basics. Exceptions are unexpected events during program execution that disrupt the normal flow. They can arise from various issues like invalid input, network failures, or resource constraint. In Kotlin, we use the true keyword to raise an exception manually. This is useful when you need to indicate an error state that the program should handle, such as throwing an illegal argument exception when a method receives invalid arguments. The try-catch block in Kotlin allows you to catch and handle exceptions. By enclosing code that might throw exception in a try block and providing catch blocks for different type of exceptions, you can manage error without crashing your application. 1 point that might be ignored by junior developers is the fact that when an exception is thrown in Kotlin or any JVM language, the JVM captures the current state of the call stack. This stack trace includes information about the sequence of method calls that led to the exception. If you start a new stack, for example by creating a new thread or using a coroutine, the exception handling context changes. Each thread or coroutine has its call stack. If an exception is thrown within a new stack, it will only propagate within that stack. As you can see in this example, exceptions thrown in a new thread or coroutines won't be called by catch blocks in the original stack. Throwing exceptions in Kotlin, as in many other programming languages, can be considered expensive due to several reasons. When an exception is thrown, the JVM needs to capture the current state of the stack, which involves creating a stack trace. This process is computationally intensive and can slow down the application. Creating an exception object and its stack trace consumes memory. If exceptions are thrown frequently, this can lead to increased memory usage and potentially cause garbage collection issues. Exceptions disrupt the normal flow of the program, which can make the code harder to read and maintain. This disruption can lead to less efficient code path being executed. And handling exceptions properly requires additional code for try-catch blocks which can make the code base more complex and harder to manage. Checked exceptions are exceptions that are checked at compile time. 
The Java compiler ensures that these exceptions are either caught and handled with the method or declared in the method's true clause. Here is an example of how it looks like in Java. Unlike Java, Kotlin doesn't have checked exceptions, which simplifies the code and improves readability. Kotlin approach reduces boilerplate code and lets developer focus on handling only the exceptions that are related to their application logic. After talking about basics, we can talk about some exception handling best practices. Number one, avoid using exceptions for normal control flow. Exceptions in Kotlin are meant to handle truly exceptional situations, not to manage routine tasks. Using exceptions for regular control flow can make the code harder to read and degrade performance. Instead, use conditional logic or other control structures. For example, instead of throwing an exception when a list is empty, you could use a conditional check. Consider using result or sealed class. This approach not only makes code handling more explicit, but also improves the readability and maintainability of your code. By clearly separating success or error paths, you can avoid the performance overhead associated with exceptions and embrace a more functional programming style. This leads to more predictable and efficient code aligned well with Kotlin emphasis on safety and clarity. Here is an example using result which allows us to use fold function to handle both unsuccess and unfailure. And here is the same example but using sealed interface which allows us to have different result cases and then handle them in a when block. Number two, validating preconditions of a function using require, require not null, check, and error functions. In Kotlin, these functions are used to validate conditions and ensure that your code runs safely. Here is a brief overview of each. The require function is a simple way to validate input arguments in Kotlin. It throws an illegal argument exception if the condition isn't met, helping you catch issues early in the code execution. This example uses require age greater than zero with a proper error message to ensure age is a positive number at runtime. The require not null works the same as require but checks the value nullability and returns a non null value, and it throws an illegal argument exception with the specified message. In this example, require not null ensures that the user's name is not null. The check function verifies a condition is true and if the condition fails, it throws an illegal state exception with the provided message. In this example, the car class drive function check if the fuel level is greater than zero before execution. You may ask yourself then, What's the difference between require and check? As it sounds in English language, require used to check precondition of a function. That means condition that must be true before the function is executed. However, check is used to check the state of a function or object. That means conditions that should be true during the execution of the function. Require throws illegal argument exception if the condition is not met, but check throws illegal state exception if the condition is not met. The required use case is typically validating inputs to a function, and check use case is to ensure that an object is in a valid state. Number three, prefer using a standard library exception. A stick to exceptions provided by Kotlin standard library for common error cases like illegal argument exception, illegal state exception, and null pointer exception. 
They are well documented and familiar to other developers and helps with your code maintainability. For example, use illegal state exception for method calls that are illegal in a particular state. Number four, create custom exceptions when needed. For scenarios that are unique to your application and are domain-specific or complex error scenarios where additional context is beneficial, create custom exceptions. This makes it easier to understand and handle specific error cases and helps with your code clarity. Here is an example of a custom exception defined for the cases that user input is invalid. Number 5. Handle nullability properly. Leveraging Kotlin null safety features prevents null pointer exceptions and improves code safety. Use the safe call operator and Elvis operator to handle nullable types safely. Number 6. Document exceptions. As mentioned in the basic section, unlike Java, Kotlin doesn't have checked exceptions. A good practice is documenting any exceptions that your functions can true, using KDoc annotation to help other developers understand the error conditions they need to handle. Here is an example of how trues looks like in KDoc. Number 7. Multiple catch blocks. When handling different types of exceptions, you can use multiple catch blocks. This lets you handle each exception type separately, providing specific responses to different error conditions. For example, handle IO exception and number format exceptions differently to give more accurate feedback to users. Number 8. Catch the most specific exception first. When you handle multiple exceptions, always catch the most specific one first. This ensures that more precise error handling logic is applied before more general ones. In this example, catching the specific IO exception first allows you to address particular error conditions with appropriate recovering actions. For example, you might want to handle file-related errors differently than other type of exceptions. Number 9. Use try-catch blocks effectively. Separate normal execution from error handling with well-structured try-catch blocks. This approach keeps your code organized and readable. In this example, the normal execution is reading the content of a file and printing it to the console. The error handling is catching an IO exception that might be thrown when trying to read the file. By using a try-catch block, we are clearly separating the normal execution flow from the error handling logic. This makes the code more organized, easier to read, and easier to debug. Number 10. Consider the layer when throwing an exception. Always keep in mind which layer you are throwing or ignoring exceptions. For a robust application, the user shouldn't experience app crashes, which means throwing exceptions in the domain layer is not acceptable, and everything should be handled within this layer or have some fallback mechanism in place. That's all the best practices regarding exceptions handling I collected based on my experience or from books like Kotlin in Action and Effective Kotlin, which are full of gems and I suggest you to read. That's it. Please write in the comments which other best practices you use in your project, which I missed, and if you have any additional tips for other developers. Also, if you like this video, do not forget to like and share it with the other Kotlin developers. Handle the unexpected gracefully and your app will never leave your users stranded. Bye.